This week, Assetto Corsa Competition received a new update, which implemented a new matchmaking system, new physics, especially regarding the brakes and chassis, as well as a few general optimizations. When ACC first released, the so-called matchmaking mostly consisted 1999 style of a server browser and a few personal ratings, which were, at the time, almost meaningless. As time went by, the matchmaking system also saw some improvements, but still couldn't keep up with the likes of GT Sport and iRacing. However, this update helps catching up tremendously. What this means is basically that the developers removed the old system for the competition servers and implemented an iRacing-like schedule. Every day there are going to be three races at 6, 8 and 10 pm in the respective time zones, which are UTC plus 1 for us Europeans and UTC minus 6 for our American friends. Before an event starts, a 5 minute registration window allows you to sign in for the race. As this can get confusing quite quickly, I will just run you through an example. Let's just say you want to participate in the first race of the day at 6 pm. So, firstly, you'll have to register anywhere between 5 to 6 and 6. Afterwards, there'll be the possibility to actually join the server until 5 minutes past 6, whereas the qualifying starts immediately after. So, now that you're registered for a race, you eventually also want to know which track you'll be driving and in which conditions, right? This can also be rather confusing at first, but once you get the idea Kunus came up with, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, at every uneven day of the month, the official Blancpain calendar of 2019 will run through in the according order. However, on even days, the track is unknown. Once every month, or more accurately, on the first Sunday of every month, a 2 hour endurance race at 7 pm will replace the three races. Oh yeah, and obviously, you'll be put in a split which correlates best with your individual ratings where competitive and safety rating are the dominant factors. This is already a solid system, right? But it doesn't end there. In hopes of further improving clean racing, some races on the competition servers will from now on be spectated by Kunos themselves and in case of reckless driving, you can earn yourself a ban of up to 3 days from the CP races. Hand in hand with the competition changes came also minor tweaks in terms of the safety rating, collision detection logic and individual BOP to nerf or buff individual cars or drivers. If you make contact with a wall on a hot lap for example, your time will now be invalidated. Mass accidents should now also be detected better and drivers which were involved through no fault of their own won't get the penalty now. And from what Kuno stated on the update log, Predominantly leaving a race will almost always result in a drop of CP rating and staying till the end guarantees you a little bonus trust for your safety rating. Now that we know how the new matchmaking works, we also want to know how the new physics influence your car and which new setup options are available, right? So let's go right into detail about the new physics elements which are mostly chassis flex and different types of brake pads. But before I'm running you through the four different types of brake pads and their advantages, let me remind you that the wear of your brake pads will be directly influenced by your driving style, ABS usage and brake bias. So if you drive more conservatively, your pads are going to last longer. It's really as simple as that. Nevertheless, the first type of pads, and yes they are legitimately titled 1 to 4, have very aggressive friction, maximum braking performance and therefore also an aggressive wear. They have a hard time under cold temperatures and last somewhere between 3 to 4 hours before your brake pedal will go long. The second type has decent friction and performance as well as low wear. Its lifespan is given as quote unquote easily 12 hours and the biggest advantage of using them over the others is their predictability and the option to close your brake ducts just a little more and therefore gaining a bit regarding your aerodynamics. The third type has moderate friction, the longest braking zones, but also the lowest wear. What's good about them is their ability to perform under cold conditions, again the option to close the brake tags just a bit more and they are basically a choice in wet conditions since you definitely want to close your brake ducts if it rains. 
The fourth and last type has extreme friction, the best braking performance, but also the worst wear by far. They suck under cold temperatures and last just about one hour. So how accurate these durability statements are and how much one can enhance the lifetime of his brakes simply by driving carefully will probably be solved in the next few weeks. Until then, we have to more or less believe what Kunos told us. However, from my own experiences so far, I can say that Z4 is great for qualifying but gets incredibly inconsistent after a few laps, whereas I would recommend Z1 for every race that lasts longer than 30 minutes. And what Kunos also told us is how to adjust our brake ducts accordingly. Just as tires, brakes also have the optimal operating windows. If you can keep them in optimal range, they will shorten your braking zones and also last longer in terms of wear. Optimally, your front brakes should turn slightly yellow in the HUD after the braking zone, while your rears are still green. This should be tested after a few laps though, so that everything can heat up properly. The aerodynamic effect of the brake ducts definitely is there, but since it is rather minor, it's just about a 3 kph deficit at the longest straight in Paul Ricard, your brake temperatures should be your priority really. The last feature they introduced in this update is dynamic chassis flex. Chassis flex more or less simulates how much your car twists under acceleration, cornering and braking. So first of all, every single car in ACC has a unique chassis and therefore flexes differently. Basically what the introduction of chassis flex does is to more or less enhance the effects of your springs and also require you to fine tune them a bit, which is quite difficult since as I said, every car has a different stiffness. Luckily for us though, Kunos has made an effort to help us dealing with the chassis characteristics. To understand how stiff a chassis is, they gave us a rule of thumb which states, the stiffer the chassis, the more precision and faster response the driver can obtain, but the less willing the car will be to change its set and possibly react also badly on the edge. And the softer the chassis, the more feedback the car will give to the driver regarding its handling, but it also has less precision and a slower response with generous sluggish feeling to it. So basically this should help you to identify which type of chassis your favorite car has. And what this means for your setup is the less stiff a chassis is, the softer your springs have to be and the better you need to dampen bumps. For stiffer chassis however, you should also go with stiffer springs. All in all, this feature allows you to attack steeper curbs a little better and makes ACC now feel a lot more like iRacing regarding the simulation of springs and bumps. So yeah, that was it for this video. If you happen to enjoy it or get something useful out of it, you can consider subscribing to this channel for more sim racing content. And with that said, I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.